Do you want to be able to understand those logical sentences with quantifiers in them? Do you want to be able to translate from English to first order logic and back from first order logic to English? If so, stick around for the next nine and a half minutes. I'm going to show you how to do it. everyone, welcome back to Attic Philosophy. We have been talking about first order logic, logic with quantifiers. If you're not sure about that, check out this video here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we translate sentences of English into logic and how we go about understanding those sentences with quantifiers in back into English. If you're finding this kind of stuff useful, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. So one thing we have to get used to once we have these quantifiers in our language is how to translate from English into our logical language using the quantifiers and back again. Okay, so given a sentence in first order logic using quantifiers, how can we understand that in English? It's fairly straightforward when we just have predicates and names and variables and connectives, but the quantifiers can make it tricky. So let's focus in a little bit on how different combinations of quantifiers would be rendered in English. So a basic sentence like this, Anna goes, Anna goes to the party. We would just render it as a simple subject predicate, predicate followed by a name. It's got that format. OK, so Anna goes to the party, G-A. Someone goes, this is one of the key insights of first order logic. The word someone, it doesn't work the same syntactically as the word Anna. OK, so Anna goes has the form GA. Someone goes doesn't have that form. It has this form. There is an X and X goes to the party. So someone goes, we understand that by saying there is this person or there is this thing X and X goes to the party. Getting a bit more complex now. Everyone who goes is happy. Everyone who goes to the party is happy. So again, this is a quantified sentence and we're going to express it with an if then. So for everyone, X, if X goes to the party, then X is happy. This is a really important one. This combination, the duo of a universal quantifier for all X plus the implication if then, these two go really well together. It's a way of saying for everyone, for absolutely everyone who is going to the party, those people are happy. This format's really important. This bit tells us it's everyone and this bit tells everyone of a certain kind. Everyone of a certain kind, people are going to the party, they're all happy. So we capture that using the combination of for all and if then. Someone likes everyone everyone who goes to the party. So in this case, we're going to need two quantifiers, one for someone and one for everyone. And they're going to go in that order. So there's someone X such that for everyone Y, if Y goes to the party, then X likes Y. OK, so there's a bit more going on there. Imagine for the moment we ignore the quantifier someone and just look at this bit. Everyone who goes to the party gets liked by X. So X likes everyone who goes to the party. Who's X there? Well, it's someone or other. So someone likes everyone who goes to the party. No one who goes is unhappy. OK, so we haven't met no one yet. We don't have a separate quantifier for no one. So we understand no one as the combination of a negation and the existential quantifier. So the existential quantifier says some X, negating it says there isn't some X. There isn't some X who goes to the party and also is unhappy. So no one is going to be captured as there is not someone. Like this, there isn't someone who both goes to the party and is unhappy. Again, unhappy is being understood as the negation of happy. So there's no person, there's no X, there doesn't exist an X who both goes to the party and isn't happy. Everyone who goes likes someone. This one's maybe a bit more straightforward. For every person X, there is someone Y such that if X goes to the party, then X likes Y. OK, another way of putting that would be for everyone who goes to the party, there's someone they like. 
OK, so the important thing there is it's the X liking the Y. So this predicate here likes the X and the Y, the order of them make a difference. We're saying everyone likes someone, not saying that someone likes everyone. Everyone who goes to the party likes someone who goes. OK, so this one's a variation on this one. The first one just says everyone who goes likes somebody or other. This one says they like somebody specifically who goes. So it's going to have the same format as the previous one. But now we're not just saying that X likes Y. We're saying that Y goes to the party and X likes Y. So the whole thing, everyone who goes to the party is such that there's someone who goes to the party they like. OK, so for all X, if X goes to the party, then there's someone who goes to the party Y and X likes Y. Everyone who goes likes somebody who goes. This can get tricky. Translating from English into logic and then reading the logic in English, it can be tricky when there's quantifiers there. And it's extra tricky when we have two quantifiers. So cases like this and this and this. If we are translating from English to logic, that is, we're trying to write an English sentence out using logical formalism. Generally, it's a good rule of thumb to write the quantifiers in the order they show up in the English. For instance, here we've got someone followed by everyone. So we've got the existential, there is someone, followed by the universal for everyone. Here we've got everyone followed by someone, and that's the order of the quantifier prefix here too. And here we've got everyone followed by someone. Same deal going on there. As a general rule of thumb, the order of the quantifiers in the English, you can follow that when you write them down in logic. And if you're trying to read out what do these logical sentences mean in English, we'll read them out from left to right, at least for the quantifier bit. OK, so for everyone who goes to the party, there's someone who they like. Here's something to be careful about. These two sentences in English look very similar, but obviously mean something different. Everyone likes someone or other versus everyone likes somebody in particular. This one, everyone likes someone or other, it's not so difficult to make that true, OK? So long as I like one person, you like maybe a different person, they like somebody completely different. As long as there isn't anyone who likes no one, this is true. But this second one, everyone likes somebody in particular, requires some incredibly liked person like, you know, AOC or David Attenborough or Stephen Fry, OK? There's a particular person and everyone likes them. So a different way of expressing this second sentence will be to say there's somebody and everyone likes them. Someone is liked by everyone. We've reversed the order of the quantifiers. And when we've done that, we've changed the construction from active to passive. So instead of saying likes, we've said is liked by. So there's a there's a feature of English that can be confusing when we're translating into logic. OK, we can express the liking relation as from X to Y as X likes Y. But we can also express exactly the same state of affairs, X liking Y, by saying Y is liked by X. And sometimes it's more natural to render a logical sentence in English using the passive construction. OK, so someone is liked by everyone is clear, it's unambiguous. Everyone likes someone in particular. It's not quite as clear. OK, here's how we would render those in first order logic. So for everyone likes someone or other, we're going to just basically write that left to right. So for everyone, there's someone they like. For everyone X, X likes someone. That's pretty straightforward. This one, it's clearer in this form. Someone is liked by everyone. So we'll start off with someone, somebody Y, is liked by, that's Y in the being liked role, someone is liked by everyone. So just be a little bit careful there. When we have quantifiers interacting, that is, there's two or more quantifiers in a row, things can get a little bit tricky. So if you get stuck, come back to examples like these. C, is your sentence something like everyone likes someone or is it someone is liked by everyone? Notice that I've written both of these logical sentences in pretty much exactly the same way. It's all about X liking Y. And the X goes with the all and the Y goes with the 
exists in both cases. The only thing that changes is the order of the quantifiers, which one we write down first, left to right, which one would be at the top of the syntax tree. So order of quantifiers matters. Not always, but it can make a difference. Changing round the quantifiers can make a difference to what the sentence means. Is it everyone liking someone or other, or everyone liking some lucky particular person? So there we have some examples of how to translate sentences in English into logic and how we can go about understanding those quantified logic sentences, particularly where we've got a couple of quantifiers in a row. So I hope you found that helpful. If you're interested in these kind of topics, if you're finding them useful, I'm going to be updating regularly on these topics. I'm releasing videos on a Wednesday and a Saturday at the moment. So if you're interested in hearing more about those, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to get updates. If you've got questions on this material, leave me a comment below. I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching this far. Thank you very much for all your support. I will see you guys next time.